Hey, what's up guys? So I'm Anon here, and today I'm going to bring you guys something a little bit different. So the Yu-Gi-Oh! subreddit is currently hosting its own online dueling book tournament series called the Reddit Championship Series. Um, and essentially, a couple of the tournament organizers reached out to a few content creators, myself included, to go ahead and provide some coverage. So I'm going to be showcasing some feature matches and uh, have some commentary uploaded for you guys um, over the next uh, week or so. Uh, maybe a couple of weeks, depending on how long the tournament ends up running for. And alongside me, I'm going to actually be co-casting with fellow Yugi tuber and very close friend of mine, uh, MBT Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, you guys probably already know him for his very witty banter, uh, fast-paced commentary, and very, very charismatic sense of humor. So definitely go give him a subscribe if you haven't already. And yeah, this is going to be uh, round one. Hope you guys enjoy. Everybody, welcome to the Reddit Championship Series commentary. On the desk is me, MBT, and Sir Eminon. How are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. How about yourself? Well, I've been better. Uh, <laughs> we are enduring quarantine together, um, and uh, we have assembled a casting desk uh, using the magic of Discord uh, to watch two individuals in their own independent houses uh, play for the glory of the title Top Redditor. Uh, a term usually reserved for the individual uh, who posts the most on Gone Wild. Um, I'm excited for this matchup. Uh, it's Paleozoic versus Crusadia, and uh, I hesitate to say Paleozoic Frogs. You've taken a look at the deck lists. Anything interesting you'd like to point out? Yeah, so this is not really your typical standard Paleozoic Frog list. It has a lot, and I mean a very heavy Shadal engine. We're talking 3 Shadal Fusion, 3 El Shadal Fusion, and I like five should all main deck monsters. So this is pretty interesting. It's, it's also kind of 60 cards, by the way. <laughs> oh, excellent. It's kind of a throwback to that weird format where uh, grass was legal and even Paleozoic players were playing 60 card amalgams of like Shadal, Invoke, Dezudiac, uh, just because resolving uh, grass looks greener was so absolutely powerful. Um, I'll be surprised to see if it's just as good in a format where. I don't know, you don't have the ability to send a third of your deck to the graveyard? Yeah, pretty uh, pretty weird. I guess the game plan is just hope to throw everything at the wall and eventually something will stick? I don't know. And what do you expect to see out of this Crusadia list? I know that when Crusadia was first spoiled, a lot of individuals expected it would be an easy OTK engine, uh, but as the archetype has evolved, it's kind of turned into an easy way to get Gamsiel uh, the sea turtle kaiju to your side of the field and muster about five or six negates. Yeah, so we do see a very large kaiju package, but this is indeed harkening back to the relatively pure OTK-centric uh, builds. Uh, we see Lightning Storm in the main deck as well as uh, three kaiju slumber. So we got a lot of board wipes here, and it's pretty standard, like nothing really too spicy, just trying to set up the OTKs as fast as we can. The only way I would endure a Crusadia match. Uh, not interested in watching Gamsiel trigger four or five times over the course of a turn. Yep. Right? You want to get into it? Yeah, let's go ahead and see what's happening here. Alright, so Leo Zini's at the top here. I believe he is the uh, Paleo Shadal frog player. Uh, With a 60 card deck, I think you're correct. Whoa! Yeah. You are kidding! Sinister Shadow Games is in this list? Yeah, so... Oh, I didn't even notice this one. So, I guess this is a trap trick target, I suppose. Uh, it's pretty interesting. I'm trying to find a way to justify it, too. Uh, this was cut even from Duelist Alliance Shadow decks. Uh, it lets you flip your shadals on your own terms and foolish burials, but it's so unbelievably slow. Uh, doesn't seem very likely to be good against an OTK deck like Crusadia. Yeah, plus uh, he doesn't have any Shadals in his hand at the current moment. Hopefully the Desires will get him there. Uh, fingers crossed. Alright, so looks like we are going to just fire off Desires because we have no other play so far. Uh, the classic 60-card uh, deck play, and oh thank god there's a Shadal. Alright, let's see, do we banish anything? Flip Flop Frog, what the <laughs> heck? Well, we knew we were deep in on playables for Shadals. I, I expect we're pretty deep in on playables for frogs, too. I wonder where the line is drawn. Will we see a uh, submarine frog make an appearance? This this man's playing Subterra Succession. This That's is... almost kind of cool. Subterra this... Succession is a really cool um, 
uh, spell that gets a flip engine going, provided the game is slowed down uh, enough that that matters. Again, all of these cards look super, super sweet in a format where, like, games last five or six turns. But against an OTK deck, good luck. Yeah, just gotta hope that your defensive cards get there, but the only real defense he has is uh, a singular impermanence, which I... I'm struggling to think if that's going to be enough here, but we'll see. What's the water shadow? Uh, Enoya Tillis? The fusion one, right? Hey, maybe that'll make it. I don't know. I think, if I remember correctly, he's not even on it. So, yeah, he's not even playing it. <laughs> so, and there's actually like kind of cool things you could do. Like, you can shut all fusion for the water shadow, all, and then like normal summon any water, and then make Marinsis Coral Anemone, and then like... It basically turns your Foolish Burial from your Shadal into, like, uh, just a free search off of uh, Coral Anemone. Like, you can send Swap Frog and revive it back. But um, he's not cute. doing any of that, so... Yeah. <laughs> Alright, looks like we're gonna set Wendy. And set, set. four pass. But, uh... Oh, this, is, this is the advanced T set. Yeah, but uh, you see a very critical card right here in um, Septo's opener. The, the fifth card right here. <laughs> And no way that this lasts more than a single turn. Alright, and it looks like we're gonna activate the Lightning Storm. Uh, going for the Shadow Games, I mean, I, I suppose you have to, <laughs> Just right? chain all of and them. Shadow games. Does Sinister Shadow Games target, or is it any number of Shadow? Uh, it says, send one Shadow card from your deck to the graveyard, then you can change any number of face-down defense position Shadow monsters to face up defense position. So and I was thinking of a scenario where you flip up Wendy, you summon one in face down defense, and you get to flip it with the second shadow games, but that assumes that, you know, the chain works like the stack. And right, it yeah. That unfortunately does not work the way that he would prefer it to. It looks like we're right. sending Beast and Hedgehog. Those are two pretty good targets, I mean, especially with a hand that doesn't do anything. Uh, goodbye to El Shadal Fusion. Uh, no Anoilatus means that there's no chance of that being resolved. And uh, then on a new chain, I expect we'll activate the effects of Hedgehog and Beast in sequence in order to get a Shadal to the hand and draw an additional card as well. Uh, and Wendy as well, it looks like. So adding Squamata, especially a Squamata, and drawing into a Trap Trick. Okay, well, uh, as you expected, there's the huge Trap Trick package that explains the succession and the like, and here comes the Kaijus. Oh boy, well, with no defense, I can't foresee this OTK not going through, but... Right. Um, the only scenario in which it wouldn't is if the Crusadia player somehow loses access to something like Draco, but as you can see, they've already drawn it, so there's really no chance. Uh, of course, the Arborea hasn't been special summoned yet, so as they link into the Link to probably Regulex in this build, they'll easily be able to uh, complete the chain all the way to Equimax. Yep, and there it is if my images will load, but that is indeed Regulex, yep. And uh, obviously Spatha is the Crusadia that people are enamored with right now, but uh, Regulex is quite powerful. It gets uh, the Forbidden Chalice, Crusadia Power, uh, which insulates against uh, interaction. Uh, luckily for us, we know that um, the Paleozoic player doesn't have any regardless. And uh, all of a sudden we have a uh, an Equimax with about 10 quadrillion attack uh, and the Maximus effect attached as well. Yeah, that is a that's one big boy. So this is what forty two plus thirty three is what seventy five plus sixteen is ninety one. That's that's big. <laughs> so that's gotta be lethal. All right. and, uh, a quick concession uh, after the Maximus effect or attack doubling effect, uh, and um, best of luck in game two. But uh, if it pay plays out like that one, I I don't have high hopes. All right. Well, there is no lightning storm at least in the opener, so that's that's pretty fortunate here. But uh. We have a pretty dead hand here from um, the Shadal Paleo player. It's really more just like 60 card Shadal at this point. This is kind of interesting. I, I would have expected the Shadal Paleo player to force the Crusadia player to go first. I know Crusadia obviously has going first combos that are very powerful, um, but not this version. You know, if you saw um, as much of the deck as you saw in that game, you know, targets for Regulex and the like, uh, you probably dare them to set anything up past a single Equimax negate and then uh, get to go off with cards like Shadal Fusion on your turn. Yeah, exactly. Like having just such a powerful card, like to go second with in. A deck or against a deck that already like you would want to like inherently go first is a you know it'd be pretty good in that case but i guess he 
opted to just go first anyway and hope for the best. I don't know. If you're playing a 60-card Paleo Shadow, you probably don't have any intention of ever seeing going second. Uh, <laughs> I think game three, he gets to go first as well, should he make it there. Yeah, I guess we'll just see how far setting four will get him. Succession requires you to have targets, I believe, uh, so that's going to be dead. Uh, the yeah. other three are potentially relevant. Yeah, Dynamiscus on a normal summon is probably pretty good, to be honest. Yeah, um, a lot of the uh, Crusadia plays for the OTK version rely on your opponents having monsters, so you can do stuff like Kaiju them and then summon your own Kaiju for additional link material uh, if things go south. Um, but it is very normal summon reliant. Draco's a start, but if the monster is banished and not in the graveyard, it's nowhere near as powerful. Yep, so let's see how this goes. Oh, he's going to shotgun Sinister Shadow Games in standby phase. So any number can be zero, apparently. All right, so All right. he's going to... Yep. That shark dog. Now we have a sweet target for Dynamiscus. Uh, fun fact for those of you who aren't very well versed in Paleo, Dynamiscus does not send as cost. It's an effect, so it will trigger shadows. Unfortunately, uh, there will not be a target in the hand as that... Uh, Called by the Grave will be eating the Hedgehog. Yeah, so it looks like he's going to have to relinquish his Shadal Fusion if he's going to want to resolve his Dynamiscus, which it puts him in a kind of weird situation where he wants to resolve Shadal Fusion for a lot of value, but at the same time, you know, if you let him get that far, then like to Equimax, and it's going to get negated anyway, so it's kind uh, of hard interesting. Part is that uh, the accessibility of Link Monsters is the problem in Crusadia, right? As long mm -hmm. as anything's pointing down, it's a liability. And unfortunately, in order for Shadal Fusion to be live, something has to be there. So it is a weird double bind. I think he's hoping the Lost Wind is going to resolve it. All right, we're gonna activate Desires and draw another Desires and another Kaiju. So two blanks, Classic. basically. All right. So the plan is just to hope the linear game plan resolves. Here we go. He is allowing him to get to uh, Magius. Uh, I I don't know. I think you probably do uh, let it just sit there. And this is rough. Uh, this is a hard one. Um, at some point here, you have to Lost Wind, but the target's hard, uh, and winning past it is difficult too. You know, uh, the Maximus hasn't been specialed, so if you don't target the Draco, they can link into Regulex and go into. Uh, this copy of Magius special at link point. Um, and because it's Regulex, there's going to be no availability for interaction after they add the power to hand. This is a tough call. All right, so he's going to Lost Win the Magius, which uh, will stop his search, but he does have succession as follow up, so um, he's going to get to the Regulex play regardless. So uh, here we'll add the Maximus back to hand, and I believe we'll probably just link it off. Yep, and the last one will reset itself, but it can't activate this turn, so he effectively has to... Like, he he's definitely between resolving Shadow Fusion next turn and, like, resolving this Dynamiscus this turn, which is kind of a tough call. And uh, right now is the last opportunity he has to do so. Uh, Regulex will, of course, get power, and then uh, the whole thing's over. Looks like he's uh, allowing the ad of Crusadia Crawler! What?! All right, so this is a searcher for World Legacy cards if you special summon it to a link zone that a link monster points to. Uh, and it's just a trap monster, so I wonder what his search targets are besides like another succession? I'm trying to think. It must be, it must be that he's uh, banished the power. I, I can't imagine any other scenario where you'd get Crusadia Crawler. Uh, Crusadia Crawler is an inclusion in the OTK builds of Crusadia solely because going first it's like a potential additional negate off of uh, Equimax. Um, I think you maybe play World Legacy Crown, but I, I'm not really sure. Alright, so we are really deep in the, the search pool here for Regulex, so we'll see what happens from here. Oh, it's Trisbana! Oh, awful. Yeah, you probably have to absolutely shotgun uh, Dynamiscus here. Yikes. <laughs> All right, so Succession's gonna target Magius. Let's see. If... Okay. <laughs> oh, he's letting this go through. Interesting. I am shocked. Whoa, valuing the Shadal fusion in his hand over his entire back row. I don't know. Is that wrong? 
if he doesn't do anything else, you know, uh, getting to next turn with a should all fusion is pretty choice. Yeah, I think he's just banking on the fact that because he didn't go Equimax, like, and he can't get Kaiju, there's not really a pathway to an OTK here. So I guess he's just assuming the should all fusion will get him there. Um, yeah. I love putting myself dead to Ash Blossom, but in this matchup, you know, what else are you going to do? Kind of have to. And I, all, the other thing, too, is that a Crawler can also trigger this Trisbana on the Paleo player's turn. So if he does draw, like, a trap, then that's going to be very, very dead. That's cute. I like it. Draws Wendy. And not a great one, but probably still good enough. So we're basically just playing pure shit all at this point. All right. I'm going to call the line. <laughs> he's going to Shadow Fusion for uh, for Shekinaga. <laughs> and then he's going to oh pitch Wendy. <laughs> he is playing Shekinaga. What are his Earth targets? Great. Oh, he's, he's on 3 Mathematician. All right. <laughs> so he could theoretically actually go that line. He is also oh, playing... He is also playing three Construct, but he only has one light monster in the entire main deck, and I will give you $100 if you can guess what it is. It's not Ghost Ogre. It's not. 60 card deck and you've decided Ghost Ogre isn't the target. It's not Trick Clown? Nope. <laughs> oh my god. Oh well, now god. I have to see it. I'm, I'll hold my breath. If we do get to see it, we'll, we'll see. Alright, he is activating it, of course, because that's the only play he has. There it is! <laughs> Oh my god, you are kidding me! Outstanding Dog Marin? Was was there ever a scenario in which it was likely you were going to deck out as a 60 card player? Wait, we're we're, we're really, really out here. <laughs> you just get to put it back in your deck, it's infinite material! It is, yeah. He is actually on three constructs, so... Oh. This is terrible. Oh boy. <laughs> He says, tech, uh, fine. I guess it also maybe chain blocks in some odd scenarios. Is it man? It is mandatory, though, so I don't really... No, never mind. <laughs> I don't really know about that one. All right. Well, we are going to regardless resolve Construct and Squamata here. Sending Beast and the Reshidal Incarnation. Uh, Reshidal Incarnation, uh, the new card from the Structure deck, uh, opens up a whole new world of plays for this archetype. Uh, by banishing a Shadal from your graveyard along with it, uh, you can flip a face down Shadal monster face up on your side of the field, and uh, there's a Shadal monster that summons monsters from your banished zone when flipped up, uh, so it's an easy way to get powerful monsters to your side of the field or extend combos. Alright, so he sided in Nibiru. Right, this was not in the main deck. Yeah, this isn't a side. I mean, this is a sweet card. Not very good against power, but I think usually they get to five before uh, Regulex resolves. Um, not very good, you know, after all is said and done and the game state is equalized, uh, but would be happy to see it in game three. The good news is, though, is that, like, once uh, Leo Zini clears the board here, like, what it, what, realistically, what is Septo going to do with the hand of double kaijus and another desires? Go down to two cards in deck and get the Kumungus beats on. I, I'm just as <laughs> as you. Yeah, we also have a cool play where we can we can set Wendy here and then trigger Rush at all incarnation and then set another card as like follow up. So he's definitely not gonna die anytime soon. I, I do kind of like this. You know, it it seems like um obviously uh, any game that's going long is favored for the uh, Shadow player. Um, but uh, kind of understanding here that um. The giant equalizers in the format, things like Lightning Storm, mean that if you're just playing a back row deck, it's very easy to just lose a ton of advantage. And your way for making games going, uh, forcing games to go long, uh, is to play an engine like Shadow with uh, almost limitless resources. Yeah, exactly. And we can see that the grind game is going to favor him drastically here now that he's made it like out of the first couple of turns. All right, so we are triggering Reshidal Incarnation in main phase two. Flipping up Wendy, triggering it, probably sending like a Squamata, yeah. Alright, we're passing on that. Alright, I mean, seems kind of unbeatable, honestly. Alright, so we see a drawn, there can be only one. I guess he was anticipating he was going first, uh, siding in Floodgates here. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I would have as well. Uh, I was making fun of the decision to uh, select second once again, but, you know, apparently it's working out, blanking a significant portion of the deck uh, that he'd expected to have to play on the play. All right, so we have Special Crusadia Crawler, and then activate the second desire. It's kind of have to. Right. What's left in the deck? Anti magic Anti arrows. Magic arrow. Please tell me we see that in game three. Oh boy. Uh, this is a dual link special. Um, as soon as you declare battle phase, you get to activate this card, and back rows turned off uh, until the end of the turn. Um, so all those effects you were hoping to activate at the end phase are gone. Not to mention. Uh, the battle tricks that would otherwise give Crusadia pause. Um, I don't know, do we go into Magius here? That seems pretty good. Yeah, looks like we just have to try and go the same line again. Okay, right, so we're going to special Reclusia. That's going to trigger Magius. Uh, would be interested in seeing if this Reclusia is going to activate, but it looks not. Does he have another target for Regulix with 9 in deck? I'm going to bully this individual if they have a target and its power. Oh, here come the kaijus. Alright, we get back and Shadal Fusion. Construct one of those old cards that just pluses from anywhere. Uh, just go to the graveyard, get the Shadal Fusion back. Alright, and we are definitely at more than five summons here, so this Nibiru is alive. Yeah, um... Ah, rough to decide if I'd, I'd be activating it here. I mean, from the Crusadia player's perspective, this is lethal with no interaction on board. But there wasn't a search off of the Regulix, so there is no power here. He could easily just wait. Yeah. I... Yeah, man. This is rough. What's the negation on Equimax look like? Is it a monster effect activation, or does it uh, have to be something? It negates up? a face-up card on the field by tributing a Crusadia Dang. World Legacy. Well, that's so, going to be no help against Nibiru. Yeah, that does not help at all. Yeah, and he is going to fire it off. Right. Uh, it's going to be a very large token. Uh, I'm I'm actually interested to see how uh, how. Leo Zini is going to get rid of it. Right, there's and notably, math. Nibiru only tributes face-ups. Uh, so as a result, uh, that set card is going to live another day. And it does trigger the Wendy as well. Oh, wow. Resetting this copy of Ariel, which can summon from the Banished Zone. Oh, this, this is likely the end of the game. Yeah, I don't really foresee a way that he's getting out of this, because... There can be only one really isn't that much of a hindrance at this point. As long as you keep one of these suckers face down, uh, it maybe negates the effect of the uh, Ariel, but with a copy of El Shadal Fusion in hand, I mean, maybe not even then. The game state is so simplified, and it favors Shadal so heavily at this point in the game. Alright, so okay, Ariel get back Hedgehog. Oh, and is this going to be a scoop? Oh, uh, probably should have flipped the there can be only one a little early. I mean, I don't think there's really any reason to uh, try and squeeze a little bit of advantage out of it in a game state where you are pretty clearly dead on board if it fails to resolve. Yeah, but even Ooh. at that point, again, like, it was getting pretty rough here. All right, so game three, uh, and Scepter opts to go second. No, no surprises there. This time, both players have gotten exactly what they want. Um, Septo with extremely powerful going second options like super polymerization, uh, the necessary material to go through a Crusadia line, and Leo Zini on a whole bunch of trap cards and a mathematician. This is pretty good. <laughs> I mean, I want to talk about different dimension ground, but of course it's just going to get red rebooted. Yeah. Ooh, sending back Jack instead of Ish at all. That's pretty interesting. Oh. <laughs> this is some real grass looks greener strats. Uh, I wonder what the three he's going to select are. Alright, so he gets a Dinomiscus, a Super Poly, and an Ash. So only one normal trap to select from. So it's three Dinomiscus, by the way. <laughs> 60 cards. But I mean, regardless, again, this is all just a moot point because of uh, the reboot here. Alright. This is a good start. Uh... Yeah, something would have to go catastrophically bad. Whoa. Whoa. Wait. Setting Leonis. 
No way. He has the full combo. Because he has yeah, you Reborn. Just, you Link away from Aegeus, then you Reborn the Leo at Link point. Yeah. What is he scared of? Because... I have no idea. He has it, it'd have to be exactly... What, like, super polymerization? Uh, a Nibiru in hand? Yeah, I, like I mean... Ball. I think you just have to make the concession if he has if he has those he has it. Cause... You're an OTK deck. You're not favored in a long game. Like, I really do think you need to be um, refusing to engage with uh, uh, any type of like um, back and forth strategy here. Because like the engines that like he's playing against are very 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 recursive. So like the longer the game goes on, the less he's going to be able to like keep up an advantage for sure. Alright, well, I guess we're just playing a Trap Mirror match and passing. I mean, that just seems like such an easy route to lethal. Uh, maybe I'm doing math wrong or something. And of course, he's going to set this copy of uh, Dynamiscus at end phase. Yeah, perhaps, maybe he's... Maybe, yeah, the math might not have worked out because he only had one Kaiju. So... The... I'm trying to think 24 here. Twenty-four plus the Leonis plus the Maximus, right? Right, that he would get off the Magius. Uh, right, because Drake. Hmm. Yeah, it's possible he just didn't have the damage output. But in that case, like, why even set the Leonis? You know, because you're not gonna die to this deck in most cases, especially like if you don't play into Shadow Fusion. So, like, might as well just keep that in hand and like hope to draw like another Kaiju next turn or like a Desires or something. For what it's worth, like, Equimax is a hell of a card. You know, there, there's a ton of scenarios where, like, a uh, good placement of infinite impermanence means that your Equimax not only gets to negate something like, uh, I don't know, the Shadal Fusion, for example, but you also get to negate the response to it that's obviously in the back row, or you get to save your red reboot uh, for um, for that. I mean, yeah, it seems seems odd to me. All right, well, we'll carry on here. Uh, so I believe Backjack was activated in the end phase to wrap the Dynamiscus, and then he's drawing the Super Poly that he stacked. So... Oh, looks like we're just going to play the waiting game. Ooh, see, now this is a card that would like greatly benefit him if he had kept this Leonis in hand. I mean, we could interrupt Kaiju Slumber, then normal Leonis, and the game's over. I mean, even so... Uh, no, there's no other way to get a free summon out of it, is there? Oh, looks like we're just gonna pass again. Yikes. Draw it, Ash, and pass. <laughs> Alright. Okay, I mean, this is this is the best Crusadia you could draw. You definitely pull the trigger here. Yeah. He kinda has to go. Alright, but now, of course, he drew the Ash. I mean, yeah. Yikes. At the very least, he'll get another kaiju for the following turn, so... Oh, but swap frog top decked. <laughs> Too late, you oh, can't give boy. him this many turns. And you know what card is terrible against swap frog? Uh, infinite impermanence. Yeah, especially with... Uh, like, he already has so much setup, too. Really? <laughs> he didn't know until right now! Yeah, I guess that's true. This is the first frog we've seen this entire game. Like, that's been public knowledge. So, yeah. <laughs> it is also worth mentioning that uh, Leo Zini's not playing uh, Dupe Frog. Incredible. 60 cards, you couldn't find uh, room for the lure. Alright, so we're just gonna send the entire frog engine to the grave. got one one swap frog and deck remaining maximum yeah oh like Ooh. none of these cards interact with like any of this whatsoever all right Probably, you know toad might actually be better if he was summoning dupe frog and sending that as the negation <laughs> uh, then you could infinite impermanence it uh, by not including Dupe Frog, he's played around everything. Okay, there's, there's a card. Well, we have Kaiju Lightning Storm, so yeah, Kaiju Lightning Storm and Reboot. 
that's got to be the end of the game. I've said that about four turns <laughs> in a row, but this time for sure. Right, so he's going to imperm the toad. And you you can have the imperm. And toad has to add itself back because it's at one now. We're one out for our uh, fallen froggy boy. Like, he doesn't even technically have to lightning storm because like he has the reboot. Unless if he's fearing like I don't know El Shadal fusion, but like. I think I probably still would. It, there could be a super poly set, maybe. I mean, no reason not to. Yeah, perhaps. ED ground. That's a sweet target to uh, red reboot. Yeah, and even though reboot sets everything, it's all going away anyway due to lightning storms. So. For what it's worth, I don't even think he had a uh, a zone for it. Yeah, he had no zones to reset oh. anything. That's true. All right, so slumber. Uh oh. I'm pretty sure this reborn is placed in the zone that imperm was set. Oh no! Oh no! Oh wait, was imperm negated? It was. Yeah. Oh, it was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, never mind. Ew. Ignore me. <laughs> okay. All right. We're well, good. enough games due to zone math to just assume that uh, I've got it wrong at all times. Oh, got some misclicks going on. All right. Double Kaiju plus the Crusadia line plus reboot, like literally the yeah. only card this loses to is Nibiru. But like you just have to take that gamble. Sure. Wait. Wait, what um, even happened? Are they are they having a discussion about <laughs> Imperm right now? Yeah, because it, <laughs> it's the same discussion that we just had. It's like, oh, Imperm was there, but wait, it was negated. <laughs> Oh, oh boy. So I guess, I guess I just didn't realize that Imperm being negated, you know, turns off oh. that clause. No, <laughs> it's part of the effect. Well, oh, no. rip game state. <laughs> uh, as as a uh, level four judge, I am issuing a um, moratorium on all decisions made by redditors. Uh, Yikes. Oh no. <laughs> all right. Well. Wow, not even attacking with the mathematician. We really have zero respect. Oh, and we got a billion kaijus here. Great. <laughs> oh, he's just he's just gonna play kaiju beat down. All right, fair I mean, enough. Uh, there are worse backup strategies. Surely you could still like normal Draco make Magius and then summon the Kaiju under the Magius to get the search? Because you have like another Kaiju as well if you want to push damage. Yeah, that's that's probably true, but this is so much funnier. <laughs> Uh-oh, damage step. <laughs> we got a lost wind coming. That. Just the fear strikes me. Oh boy. Oh uh, the... no, 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 no dino and damage step, my friend. Uh... Oh boy, this game state is becoming more and more chaotic with each passing second. Well, this game is beyond repairable at this point. <laughs> oh, okay, no, they 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 did it. All right, okay, good. Um, there's a backjack. Fine. <laughs> yeah, I mean, sure. At this point, that that's fine. They gotta be able to do is out a 2400 attack vanilla monster. This guy's really just afraid of, like, a mirror force in Crusadia? Like, I don't know. I'm unironically under the opinion that his win condition at this point is to deck his opponent out. I mean, he's always <laughs> going to win that battle with uh, 60 cards, right? <laughs> so. Uh, two Draco. Uh, unfortunate, but. Maybe a sign that you should start firing them off. What's the one set trap we don't know? Uh, they both have super poly set. Both of them. <laughs> so At some point you're going to have to go for it. Yeah. Looks like that point is now. Alright, we're going in. This is kind of screwy, of course. Um, thankfully, we do have the Leonis that we set on the first turn, which uh, allows additional summons. And let's get that Maximus as well. Uh, notably, Equimax from this position will have Piercing, which will not match up very well against the zero defense backjack. 
Yeah. Is he playing the field spell? That's what I have to know. Uh, let's see. Does he play the field spell? He does play the field spell, yes. That's going to allow him to attack every single monster, and uh, I'm sure that's lethal. That's got to be lethal. How afraid of you are of that one back row that's been set for two or three turns? <laughs> No, I mean, as an OTK deck, at some point you just have to have no respect for your opponent. Now, at the at the very least, power will ensure that it won't matter whatever it is. Uh, oh, he's going zero Boros. Oh! <laughs> this game is so far out of my control. Alright, well, I mean, the Crusaders are pretty good at triggering zero Boros, if nothing else. Yeah. So I guess we're just going to try and wipe the board and hope that uh, this gets there. Uh, how big is the zero here? Uh, it's nine cards? Yeah, nine, so right. 18, so 48 at the current moment. Like, when it comes back. This is where we'll get to see if they're playing by uh, TCG or OCG rules, and what a rip. As long oh, as boy. he's not dead here, that is going to really set up the entirety of the uh, of the engine. That's unironically a very good draw here. <laughs> like, it gets oh, his Paleo engine back online, like, he gets some of the Paleo off of it, and then he can get his Shadal engine back, too. The uh, one thing about Zero Bor Boros is the first time triggering it is laughably easy. The second time is almost impossible. And he didn't draw Desires at any point in this game, so this is definitely not going to be a er, threatening game here. Even if it was, we could just block with a Dynamiscus. Yeah. I think I'd just take it, uh, go to end step, and uh, get a Toad for my trouble. Hmm, he's choosing to block now. I wonder why he's very afraid of taking the damage. Well, in terms of cards that win you the game if you get to resolve their uh, flip effects, uh, Hedgehog is pretty far up there. I would even consider Kaiju slumbering here. Alright, we're going to attack Dinomiscus. And he does. Alright. Oh, I mean, should all fusion is a card you don't have an out for, but uh, this is going to allow... Um, the entire shadow line to slowly work its way into relevance. Yeah, Hedgehog getting a random Shadal is uh, probably a lot better than searching a fusion spell. For for the sake of the Crusadia player, at least. <laughs> and uh, obviously trying to zone manage as best as possible, given the circumstances. Alright, so we got the, the coveted top tier kaiju standoff right here fiend griefing to send backjack i like it oh this card's so sweet in builds of this deck that are playing backjack and uh honestly i mean i have no idea how the crusadia player is going to manage anything out of this yeah like how do you get over just like infinitely walling up <laughs> you can make magius you have no way to trigger it you need another crusadia to do anything yeah this is looking quite bad yeah, plus now he I can just. Well. Yeah, now he can just flip over the Fiend Griefing, trigger a Dynamiscus, activate Ronin Toten, make a Toad, plus, like, should all follow up. Last thing he has to deal with is this uh, 3300 Chonker, which, of course, would be fine if he was playing Duke Frog, but hey! <laughs> I'm not here to second guess the uh, winner of this game's deck list. Oh, looks like we're, we're just gonna pass instead. Fine. Yeah. Who needs Toad? Does he play any other rank 2s? Let's see. He plays both of the Paleozoic Ixies, so both Anomalocaris and uh, Opabinia. Both of those seem so strong right now. I guess they're less strong because you don't have access to Dynamiscus, but I mean, even Canadia is almost game winning at this point. Draws another Slumber. He's been through how many Kaijus? 1, 2, 3 in Grave. Four in the field, and then one banished, so that's five kaijus. I have different names, so that makes me think he doesn't have any remaining. He neglected to banish the kaiju slumber last turn, and I think there's no way you wouldn't do that if you didn't have the ability to. 
Oh, well, he's doing it this turn. Right, sure. Nice tribute over Beast. Um, it uh, really does not resolve the underlying question, which is uh, the control deck is getting extra turns to uh, figure out how to win the game. But he just keeps passing instead of making proactive plays. Yeah, like, at some point, you've got to pull the trigger, right? Like, making an Opa Binia here and dealing with this monster just ends the game. Oh, we're having a quick question about conjunctions. Uh, oh, Fiend Griefing, if you're not able to um, send a backjack, he's asking? Ah. Uh, the, it, it absolutely can. Um, that, uh, that second clause is optional. It is optional, yes. He's putting back Regulix. Like we are finally going for um, some rank two. We could theoretically make anomaly carries here. Uh, he doesn't have another way to trigger Ronin. Unless if he, oh yeah, he can lost wind. If he not like yeah. nice, but it's not pretty at a. And, uh, looks like that is what he's gonna do. I think finally we have put ourselves in a winning position. It only took, um, oh no, no, are you kidding me? Well, okay, well we can, maybe we'll make it here. oh, we, we can put back Swap Frog and then make Anomalocaris, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Oh, jeez. Uh, forgive me for not remembering that this deck was playing Lee and Colia. Nope, we're just making, no, nope, oh, okay. we're just making. Or just do that. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, this thing has half its normal attack. We can just attack directly and, uh, wipe this one up. Yeah, and unless if some random unforeseen circumstance happens, this should be the end of the game. That's not going to do it. Would have been nice about five turns ago, or any turn that we were... What is he standby wait. phase toting? Yeah, I was going to say, like, over? isn't he out of swaps? Oh, wait, no, we saw Flip Flop Frog in game one. Is this oh, the target? This person is oh. not playing Duke Frog. Oh, no, he's not out of swaps. Okay, all right, never mind. I did not keep track. All okay. right, swap left. Is he activating Swap's effect? Uh, looks like that is a no. Oops, I accidentally clicked fast forward. Oh, uh, well, for what it's worth, we know this part of the combo. Oh, okay, so what happened here is that uh, he activates Magius, and then Leozini used Toad to tribute the Gamma Seal that was given to him to try and negate it, and then Septu is chaining power to Toad. Uh, that's really cool, actually. Uh, it gets the monster out of the uh, pointed zone. Uh, but if he's still able to find a way to get a uh, the field spell to his side of the field and the um, the Leonis back in hand, you know, he can chew through the remainder of the board regardless. Be excited to see it. I wonder if this Regulix having been put back in the extra deck by the Fiend Griefing actually will matter here. I can't imagine not putting something like uh, the Leonis back just in case, you know, there's a piercing victory that you um, failed to account for. At the very least, it seems better than giving them their engine back. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see. So Draco gets back Maximus or Arborea. All right. I confused but sure and he does have the field spell here right that gives him the ability to attack every monster his opponent controls all right so what is a echo max on 3000 plus 800 plus 500 is 43 i can't do math All right, so we're just going to clear the board here. We finagled our way into lethal, finally, after all this time. <laughs> it's definitely not lethal, for sure. Oh. Uh, <laughs> wait, that is, uh, Arborea is not special from the extra deck. He can't make this. Oh, no. Oh, okay, all right. 
Thank God. Okay. okay, all right. He's just going to make another Magius. All right, sure. <laughs> Best top deck. Oh, gosh. Oh, God. Oh, man. Is this really how this game's going to turn out after all that? I have nothing to say in regards to... Uh... And, and both players were given so many opportunities to lock this game up. Uh, the outcome to me is already foregone. Yeah, this game lasted about 20 turns longer than it probably should have. <laughs> <laughs> and it may be an additional game, even. I mean, I speaking of never decking out, out he's literally never going to deck out with this card, so... I think he just wants to show off that he has the ability to just do this forever. Uh, how do you how do you out Abramax at this point in the game though? Like the, the game is so like simplified. Oh, here, hover Abramax real quick. I'll invent a way. All right. While the Sling Summon card is on the field, your opponent cannot target this card with card effects. Also, their monsters cannot target monsters for attacks except this one. Once per battle during damage calc, blah blah blah. And then if he does out it, he can non-target shuffle a card into the deck. So it can't be targeted, and he can only attack the Abramax, which gets the boost. That's pretty good. Um, does Anomaly Karis target? Uh, Anomaly uh, Karis, let's see. Alright, yeah, I would, I would see no super polymerization way, non super polymerization way to do this. Yeah, he has to draw specifically Shadal to make a construct. It doesn't seem that difficult. <laughs> i do it right now. See how many should else has he been through? He's been through two Wendy, a Beast, a Hedgehog. Very few. Yeah, so he has another Wendy, and he has Squamatas left. So yeah, he should be able to draw one eventually. Question is if he'll lose by then. I think we've got about fifteen more Ronin activations before we're in any mortal danger. All right, so it's walling up here. This is cool, uh, just as an attacker. Oh, wow. Oh, Leonis target Avermax. It's Mech Knight Crusadia Avermax. You can target it. Oh, oh this definitely game. is game then. And Revival target oh, Avermax. Right. Oh, God. <laughs> adorable. Not necessarily good, but adorable. All right, well, yep. None of those cards are answers. And that is finally the end of the game. Oh, wow. And two I mean, turns later, he would have drawn it. Oh. Well. I, I, don't, I don't really know what to say about this. Um, folks, uh, before you enter any tournaments, please do your best um, to ensure your opponent isn't going to be able to uh, get you on rulings of your own cards. Uh, remember that even if cards have downsides, they, they have to resolve, usually, for you to experience those downsides. Yeah, and, uh, that was very, very game-changing here, this this interaction right here. If you're an aggro deck, just do not respect your opponent. <laughs> don't, don't play around anything after a certain point in the game. If they have it, they have it, and you don't want to get into a long grind game with them. I mean, it worked out here, but uh, normally I wouldn't expect it to. Yeah, I mean, the favorability of that game wavered probably in the realm of, like, seven times. So uh, The lines were so unbelievably weird um, that I think neither of us at any point in the game could have predicted what was going to happen next. Yeah, th this uh, it provided a very interesting ground for some unique commentary, we'll put it that way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Ugh. The quarantine is getting to all of us, folks. Yeah. <laughs> IQ is quickly dropping by the second. Uh, well, I hope you enjoyed round one. Um, hopefully we'll be up with round two um, on a content creator's channel in the next couple of days as well as those finish. Um, anything you want to close out with? Um, well, this is a good game, I guess, uh, in, as, as far as entertainment value is concerned. Uh, I did enjoy watching this one. <laughs> yeah, certainly. Uh... All right. So see you guys next time.